talking drama and I met Rick, Rick P. Jones, and fell madly in love. And he was playing in a band called The Stay at Homes, which had actually managed to get themselves on um, John Peel at the time. Anyway, so my first uh, backing singing on stage in a rock band was with Rick's band. Anyway, so we hooked up and he became my first partner in crime for many years. Uh, we moved back to Birmingham. I had been studying at Kent. Um, we moved back to Birmingham and we got a band together called The Playthings. And we supported Duran Duran on their first tour. And we were on a TV show presented by Toya. Um, gosh, this is all so long ago. But anyway, that was like our first band kind of had a little bit of success with. And we were on an album called Brumby. And then we disbanded that. And we decided to do something completely different. And we met this fabulous guy called Robert Shaw, who's an amazing singer. He's now a brilliant artist, actually. He does fantastic digital spiritual art. He's on Instagram. Robert Shaw is fab. Anyway... Uh, Rob was a singer in Swan's Way, but what we decided to do was all play instruments that we'd never played before. Uh, it was quite interesting. Um, I played drums. Um, I also played keyboard and we all wrote the songs together and I did backing vocals. But we managed to get Simon Woods, who was the manager of UB40, to manage us. And um, we got a publishing deal for our song Soul Train and then The Tube. Uh, got to hear it and they came up to Birmingham and filmed us playing in this little strip club called the Review Bar which we used to also put gigs on at so yeah Soul Train did really well um, we recorded all around the world um, including New York with Mike Thorne who, who had produced Soft Cells, Tainted Love and Bronsky Beat so we did a few tracks with him in New York which was amazing oh my god the 80s in New York going to the Area Club and Limelight and everything it was also fab and and um, so that was a really good time. We recorded an album which is uh, available. It's called, uh, gosh, what is it called? It's called The Fugitive Kind. We did lots of touring. We took an orchestra on tour with us. It was amazing, a string section and a horn section. And um, then actually we disbanded that and Rick and I carried on working together um, and we formed a new band called Scarlet Fantastic. And I got in touch with one of the producers at Radio 1 to play some new demos that we'd done. And um, No Memory was one of the first songs we wrote. Um, we'd written it in Birmingham in a very miserable February. And we were kind of, you know, harking back to hedonistic times where we had no memory of all the crap that was going on currently at the time. So... Um, and yeah, so Scarlet Fantastic, um, the Tube again, um, wanted to film us. So myself and Rick and our manager Jack at the time uh, went up to, we had a different manager then. He, he, he was actually, he had signed the Eurythmics to Sony and we'd played him a demo and he'd really liked it. So he managed us. Anyway, I'm waffling. I'm good at that. And uh, so we went up to Newcastle and recorded a film for the Tube, which of no memory to the demo actually which um is is there on youtube it's um it's still one of my favorite little pieces of film actually and it was it was recorded it was videoed by a guy who had done some of the elvis costello videos so that's kind of how i got into doing scarlet fantastic and that was with rick p jones bless him before we talk more in depth about scarlet fantastic let's give the single from yourselves the fabulous plug me in a play
can work with Dave's Washbourne and uh, we did want to do a co-production because we had quite a lot of ideas ourselves we knew how, exactly how we wanted it all to sound and we'd got a demo that had already been on the tube and we were happy with it so we just needed to get into those fab studios and uh, they were amazing studios state-of-the-art and the people there were great so we were working with Dave's Washbourne and I didn't get a taxi home and we had to get back to Cricklewood <laughs> A little after that, in the early 90s, when I was with my new partner, uh, my long-term husband, in fact, um, Leif, Leif Kale, I used to call him Leafy Tree, um, we were working together and we got in touch with Pete. Got it, I got in touch with Pete in 92 and I phoned him up and I said that I'd met Leif, this really fantastic cowboy. And we'd written quite a few songs together. We'd recorded an album in Birmingham, actually, called Pilots of the Impossible. We recorded that with Bob Lamb, who had recorded the first UB40 album. But anyway, me and Leif, this wonderful American cowboy, um, went in to see Pete Waterman and we played him some songs that we'd written. And Pete went, wow, these are amazing. He said, you know how good these songs are, don't you? What do you, what do you want to do? And we said, well, we want to come in and we want to do some recording. So Pete said, yep, come in. And so anyway, he really loved what we were doing. And um, we signed uh, a publishing deal with him. And then um, we actually record, we, we signed uh, to his label, to his PWL label, and we were with them for three years. Amazing. Um, this was 92 to 95. And um, during that period, we worked with Barry Stone, who um, has actually just uh, produced the Steps album. Um, Barry is one of my greatest friends now, absolutely lovely. Um, and he works with Jules. And uh, yeah, so uh, Leif and I, we worked with Barry Stone um, for quite a long time at PWL. And um, in the latter part of this period that we were signed to them, we actually went in and wrote a song with Mike Stock. Uh, and it's called Show Me No Mercy. And actually, um, we compiled an album together. We called it Kale and Kale, because uh, that's what we were calling ourselves. Um, and it's Show Me No Mercy with several other tracks on it. And I'm actually going to make it available as a digital, um, yeah, as a digital album. Um, we had sold quite a few CDs of it a few years ago. But I'm going to make it available on all the usual uh, digital platforms. And yes, it's uh, it was uh, a song written with um, Mike, uh, Show Me No Mercy. It was a really interesting time. And in fact, a lovely guy, a very talented guy called Peter Wilson is going to do a version of it. And we're going to do a duet. We're going to do that this year, I think, or next year. So that's something to look forward to. There you go. Wow, yes, you so need to release the album digitally. It's outstanding. So let's give the title track, Show Me No Mercy, a play. <laughs>
your artist, what would that be? Hmm, that's an interesting question. What song would I do if I was to re-record a Stock Aitken and Waterman song? I, do you know what? Probably would be a Mel and Kim one, probably something like Respectable. I did used to like them, actually. And I'd probably record it in an entirely different way, maybe even doing... I don't know, kind of like a piano version or something. I don't know. It's an interesting thing to think about, isn't it? I did used to like the Bananarama stuff as well. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yes, great choices mentioning Bananarama, Mel and Kim. We love Respectables. So let's give that a play. I've done so many different things. Um, I've branched out into music that has been used uh, in movies as well and uh, on some uh, high profile TV commercials, which is great. It's always a joy when that happens. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, in the gosh, I think it was, I can't remember which year, maybe 2006, I don't know. Um, I did an album. Um, by Mighty K. It was called Club Silencio and this was a collaboration I did with Leaf and also with Graham Crabb from a band called Pop Will Eat Itself. So that was released um, in the mid-2000s and um, after that I collaborated with a guy called Martin Watkins who was the keyboard player for Mark Almond and we did an album under the name of Maggie and Martin it's um, an album that saw us through an interesting time in our lives. Leaf wasn't too well. And this, for us, recording the album was like a healing, kind of healing therapy. Um, so, yes, uh, that was an enjoyable, very positive thing to be doing whilst uh, it was a bit of a difficult time for us. But that album came out um, in... 2016 you're right and there's a few videos um around there's a song called uh, beyond pluto from the album which i like and i'm trying to think what the oh yes and take me away is another video that i did for that much to remember isn't it um anyway i've got a, a, a new dance track coming out that sean has produced uh, it's called make way for love and that'll be out in the summer and he produced my last song to hell which was a song I wrote with Aidan Cassidy, very talented Dublin writer. Um, so, yeah, and uh, currently I've been writing a lot of songs with John Walters, who used to be in Landscape. Do you remember Einstein a go-go? That was quite a, quite a big song way back. Anyway, John and I have written quite a few new songs together, which I'm recording for a new album. Um, looking forward to that. And John actually did produce a lot of the Swans Way songs as well. He produced Soul Train. So it's a joy to be working with him. So, yeah, kind of it's all it's all ongoing and, you know, working um, within the parameters of, you know, the COVID restrictions. I, luckily, I have a studio at home. So at the back of my house, I have a recording studio and um, whenever I can, I... I managed to do some work in there. But yeah, I've got a whole album of material um, that I'm in the middle of recording. So there will be a new album from me. Um, so yeah, it's just uh, go Maggie. Go Maggie indeed. They sound exciting times. You mentioned there the single to hell. <laughs> I've absolutely love speaking to you. Thank you again. Well, thank you, Mario and Julian. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, 
wishing you guys a really happy new year and thanks for cheering us all up because we all need it <laughs> and let's just hope that this year is a lot better than 2020 i think there's a lot of nice things to look forward to we've got to we've got to keep sight of that haven't we there will be better days all right guys thank you very much bye Better days indeed, Maggie. And that happens to be your brand new single title, which is out in February. So let's give that fabulous track a play. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh.